Number six then. Find the value, for four marks, find the value of the constant k, which appears a couple of times in this 3 by 3 matrix, for which the matrix is singular. Now, singular means this matrix has no inverse. In other words, its determinant should come to zero. So all you're going to do here is work out its determinant and solve that equation equal to zero. Now, you'd expect the first mark to be for something like stating that the determinant should be equal to zero, but they haven't got that down till the third mark. The first mark starts when you work out, starting to work out the determinant. Now, actually, although you don't do this in advanced style, or it's not pointed out to you, you can work out the determinant using any row or any column. It's just that you always just do it taking the top row. That might not be the most convenient one. In this case, the most convenient one would be the bottom row because there's a k, a 1 and a 0 to multiply by. But no matter which row or column you decide to use, what happens is it's the sum of the three entries in whichever part multiplied by their signed minors. The minor for each entry is the little 2 by 2 matrix that you're left with when you exclude the row and column, including the entry. And signed because, for a 3 by 3 matrix, the signs go like this. So the 3, when it multiplies its minor, will be multiplying a positive number. The k, when it multiplies its minor, will be multiplying a negative one and so on. And you use that pattern no matter which of these you use up or down the way. I'll just stick with go across the way. So, the first part would be this. It's singular if the determinant of the matrix is equal to zero. Well, that should have been the first mark, but that's not actually given the mark until it says you start working out the process. And then there's a mark later on for making it equal to zero. Well, if you just use the top row, so it'll be three times it's minor, knock out the row and column, negative 4, 2, 0, 1. K times, it's minor, 3, 2, K, 1. But the sign for this one is minus, so negative that. Back to plus again for the top row. 2 times, it's minor, 3, negative 4, K, 0. Now, that's given the first mark. So now you need to tidy that up. Oops, I should have put equal to zero, although the equal to zero wasn't actually given a mark yet. So what have you got all together? Well, that was a wee mistake there. What did I do there? That was a negative four, two, wasn't it, for that one? Negative four, two, zero, one. That wee two got neglected there because I wrote that four over in its space. Anyway, happy in the end. Main diagonal minus the other diagonal. Negative 4 take away nothing's negative 4, so that makes that negative 2. I'll just put them down. 3 times negative 4. And that's minus k times main diagonal 3 take away the other diagonal 2k. This one plus 2 times main diagonal 0 take away the other one, so it'll be plus 4k. So that means you've got negative 12 minus 3k plus 2k squared plus 0 plus 8k. And if I tidy that up to the final quadratic, that's 2k squared plus 8 minus 3 plus 5k minus 12 equals 0. Now, that's actually worth two marks here, because finally you get a mark for saying equate it to 0, and there's a mark for simplifying it. So maybe I'll put that mark here then for having it taken down to those terms. And the final mark's just for solving that little quadratic equation, for finding the values of it. So obviously with a 2k, it can only be 2k and k. So this then says you've got factors of 12, whereby if you double one of them, you'll get a difference of five. Well, that must be three and four. Double the four gives you eight, so that must be the three. The larger product, that's the eight, gets the plus, so that must be minus. So finally, what are the values of k? Well, for this one here, it'd be 3 upon 2. And for this one here, it'd be negative 4. And that's the last mark.